Hey everybody, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green, and today I'm happy to take you on a tour of the Butterfly Pavilion, which is located just north of Denver, Colorado, in the small town of Westminster. If you've been following my channel for some time, then you'll know that I moved to Colorado just a couple weeks ago, and this is one of the first places I wanted to visit. You know, I like plants, but insects and plants have always been kind of inextricably interwoven with one another, right? So, um, I, you know, whenever you visit a place like this, you see the combination of plants and insects, and you kind of get to see them interacting, and it's just really nice. You see... Um, all kinds of nice tropical plants that you wouldn't necessarily see otherwise. It's kind of like visiting a conservatory, really, uh, but of course has the added benefit of lots of beautiful butterflies, tropical butterflies from all over the world flying around and sometimes landing on you and flying in your face, and uh, it's just a lot of fun just to enjoy. It's a very relaxing space, and I can imagine in the winter time it's a especially nice place to come. So today I'd like to invite you to walk around with me in the Butterfly Pavilion and maybe we'll see some nice sights like this uh, uh, worker there um, releasing the butterflies for the audience. That was certainly a nice thing to see. But then I'd also like to talk a little bit about my first impressions. It's, like I said, it's been two weeks since I've moved to Colorado and uh, it's certainly different from where I'm, where I'm from. I'm from western Kentucky and I guess the first thing that we can talk about are differences in climate. Um, Kentucky is a very humid, kind of subtropical climate in the summertime. It's very warm, very humid, it rains a lot, and we have lots of lush green growth, uh, and it's really easy to plant things. You just dig a hole in the ground, put plants in the ground, and they will grow happily. Um, on in contrast, if you come out to Colorado, you'll see that uh, they receive much less rainfall every year. The ground is rocky, sandy, you have to do some soil preparation before you plant anything because the ground just isn't really conducive to, to growing things. The sun out here is certainly more intense. If you go outside, you're going to be sunburned much more quickly uh, quickly than you would be in Kentucky because you are getting a lot more of that ultraviolet radiation. Uh, the elevation of where I live in Colorado is about 5,400 feet above sea level, which means there's less atmosphere above you and more sunlight is going to hit you and you're going to burn faster. The great thing about this increased elevation is that you get a really big difference between day temperatures and night temperatures. For example, uh, you could, in terms of in terms of Fahrenheit, you're looking at you could have 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost 40 degrees Celsius, and then at night it could drop 10 to 15 degrees easily. You know, maybe even more. So in general, because the weather's drier. You don't feel the heat the same way that you would feel it in a humid environment. And of course, we've always heard, we've all heard somebody say, oh, it's a dry heat. Well, when it's hot, it's hot for, sur uh, for sure, especially when you're standing in the sun. But it is true that at night, you do experience a really nice drop in temperature. And so far, the weather here has been really nice. Now let's talk a little bit about people. Um, in general, uh, so far, so good. I've met uh, lots of different people, either related to my job or just um, in the grocery store or just, you know, out. And uh, there's a lot of people that are not from here. Uh, Colorado is a very popular place for people to move. In fact, I think recently Denver was one of the um, fastest growing cities in America. And um, of course, the climate is the reason that a lot of people are living here, are moving here. Also, uh, compared to places like California, the cost of living is less expensive here. And um, yeah, in, in general, people have been very nice. I know that sounds pretty uh, generic, but um, I guess to be more specific, I could say that people are willing to start up a conversation with you, even if they don't know you, especially if you're just waiting in line. Um, most likely, someone will turn and just start chatting with you. 
um, but um, it's very you know light it's very light and people are I think very respectful of you know each other's differences I think politically um, the, uh, Colorado is neither a left nor right leaning state it's kind of in the middle and uh, it, that's you know, according to what I've seen, at least people aren't, you know, they don't really jump into, um, you know, topics that would be controversial, just kind of lighthearted things like that. And I really like that. I like the fact that people know to respect each other's space and, you know, don't bring up topics that might be a little bit offensive. In general, it seems like a very welcoming society. You have people from all walks of life here. Um, I will say you don't, as far in my experience, I don't see a whole lot of racial and ethnic diversity. It seems pretty whitewashed, um, but that's um, that's just how it is. But in general, uh, people have been very nice, and, and I think that I have a possibility to really make some good friends here. Another guy that moved here from Kentucky at my work that I met, uh, we were kind of talking back and forth, and we decided that in general, um, People are okay with, you know, you doing whatever you want to do as long as you're not being a dick. <laughs> so, that's cool with me. According to cost of living, well, um, I would say things like uh, fuel, gasoline, um, food. These things seem to be pretty, com uh, you know, priced more or less the same that they were in Kentucky. A gallon of gas right now is about two dollars and sixty cents, depending on where you get it. And um, food, I think I got a gallon of milk the other day for a dollar ninety, maybe something like that. Um, but there's, uh, I think the real cost here is uh, finding a place to live. Real estate is very, very expensive. Um, I live closer to Boulder, Colorado, which is a little bit closer to the mountains, and uh, houses out here, if you want to buy a house, you're looking at, you know, the cheapest house is going to be around $400,000 and up, you know, well into the million dollar range. Um, if you wanted to buy a condo, then you're looking more, you know, you're still going to spend $200,000 probably. You might be able to get something for less than 200,000, maybe 150, 175. But um, they have regulations about building out here. Um, you can't build uh, to a certain height. You know, you have height limitations, and that's all to protect the uh, views of the mountains and um, to not, you know, make it too urbanized, I guess. So that limit on building makes it more expensive because more and more people are moving here but there's not as many places to live if you want to rent an apartment here a one bedroom apartment near the boulder area you're looking at thirteen hundred dollars minimum and you actually be lucky to find something that cheap um, if you're in denver downtown you're going to be paying a lot if you live out in the suburbs you can pay a little bit less than that i have a friend who has a four bedroom apartment and they pay sixteen hundred dollars for the whole thing and they split it among four roommates. So that's a little bit more affordable, but then of course you're, you're kind of out in the suburbs. But I have to say it's, it's worth it and you get what you pay for when it comes to a place to live. I mean, if you want to, if you're a more rural, nature-loving type of person, you have got endless opportunities to go into the mountains and explore. You have Rocky, uh, Rocky Mountain National Park not too far away. You have all kinds of small little mountain towns and winding mountain roads to explore. You also have um, the city of Denver is, is, is fantastic. You've got all kinds of events and things happening. So you can go to Comic Con in the summertime. There's all kinds of things to do. So um, I'm just going to wrap it up by saying so far, so good. I really am, you know, I've really enjoyed myself so far and. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, joining me on this little journey, and I'm going to keep you updated. So until next time, this is William Green. See you later.